Disability, an overarching term that applies to about one in four New Zealanders. So on a crisp spring Auckland day, the Access Alliance, a grassroots organisation campaigning for accessibility legislation in New Zealand, is gathering for its inaugural conference. The Alliance, which counts the Blind Foundation, CCS Disability Action and Deaf Aotearoa among its members, collectively represents 760,000 Kiwis. Alliance advocate Vivian Naylor understands just how crucial it is to have good accessibility laws. We're fighting as much as anything an attitude that, well, we can manage without it, we don't need to do these things. Our Building Act and Building Code are not adequate. The Building Code is a 1992 model. That's a long time ago. Technology changes. Building systems change. And if we don't incorporate accessibility and usability for all, right at the beginning, change an attitude, we're hitting our head against a brick wall. The New Zealand Institute of Economic Research released a report that estimated nearly half a million people with disabilities are in the labour force. The report, based on 2013 figures, found the unemployment rate for people with disabilities was 9.2%. 3% higher than the overall national rate. That 3% costs New Zealand's economy 1.45 billion each year. If commercial buildings don't accommodate the, the needs of a range of people with different types of impairments, then their opportunities for work are considerably reduced. So that if they don't get work, they'll continue to be living on a benefit even though they're qualified and perfectly capable of doing that work, uh, which is a net cost, obviously, to the country in having to pay benefits unnecessarily, um, and it also means there's the less tax as a result of their employment. Where do we sit internationally? The, the States, I would say, are probably the, um, the country that was at the foremost. Um, Canada's certainly ahead. Um, Australia has got better um, design guides than, and laws than we have. Um, every time I go back to the UK, I see many more improvements than were ever there um, when I left, sort of 30 years ago. Um, we are behind. Send a request. I'm a voter. I have a disability. Three of the parties have promised. International disability rights advocate and Canadian lawyer David Lepofsky says accessibility affects everyone. Got it? David, who is blind, helped secure Ontario's own accessibility legislation in 2005. Ontario, the uh, biggest province in Canada, passed a law in 2005 at the request of a community coalition just like the one meeting here in Auckland uh, that requires the province to become fully accessible to people with disabilities within 20 years. Ten years on, Ontario's accessibility legislation is still a work in progress, and David says New Zealand must learn from the Canadians. New Zealand has the advantage uh, if, it, uh, if its government decides to proceed with national accessibility law to do that, to look at us, to look at other uh, countries all around the world to see what works and what doesn't work. David also says good accessibility laws make good business sense for New Zealand's economy. Take the tourism industry, for example. There are one billion people with disabilities around the world. That's one big tourist market you can't ignore. And a country that is dependent on tourism as a major source of revenue um, can't afford to concede any major chunk of the market, much less one billion potential tourists. And believe me, we've done for Vivian, really it's about moving with the times. Really right. This government has put more emphasis on updating the disability strategy, which was produced in 2001. Um, and yet the building code was, was um, 1992. <laughs> and how can you ever have a good outcome from a disability strategy when you're working with documents that are building our um, built environment and our transport environment on old legislation? It's a joke. <laughs> Vivian will keep campaigning for fair accessibility laws in New Zealand, which at some point we might all depend on.
I think once the politicians realise that they're probably going to get old and they're probably going to have difficulty getting around um, the, the built environment and use public transport, perhaps that'll actually hit home. <laughs>